The Lord be with you. Good day, everyone. It's my great privilege to welcome you here to this holy place, this beautiful place, and um, this place where we give worship to God. So it doesn't matter where you're coming from today, if you're our neighbours in the streets around us and you belong to this parish physically, you're most welcome and you know that, I do hope and pray you know that. But if you are joining us from some other part of the country or indeed the world, you are most certainly welcome here in this family that we are, the family of God. We've gathered as brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus who has ascended to heaven. We celebrated the ascension on Thursday today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. I cannot believe it's the seventh Sunday of Easter and all this time the church has been without you in these pews. But we most certainly been the church. Been the church together through social media and been the church in our domestic location. So I know we are the church. I know we are together as the church and I thank God for that this day. Let's bring ourselves into this holy place, into this holy mass, humbly, by first of all acknowledging that we are sinners, all of us. We are sinners and we need to ask the Lord's mercy and the Lord's forgiveness so that we might truly experience the powerful and wonderful presence of the Lord this day in this mass. Let's turn to the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, 
conditions, O oh Lord, so that we who believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the ends of the earth, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the apostles went back from the Mount of Olives, as it is called, to Jerusalem, a short distance away, no more than a Sabbath walk. And when they reached the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. There, they were, there were Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Jude, son of James. All these joined in continuous prayer, together with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord. The response, Alleluia. The Lord is my light and my help, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, before whom shall I shrink? There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of, our, of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. O Lord, hear my voice when I call, have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. If you can have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad, because you will enjoy a much greater gladness when his glory is revealed. It is a blessing for you when they insult you for bearing the name of Christ, because it means that you have the Spirit of glory, the Spirit of God, resting on you. None of you should ever deserve to suffer for being a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or an informer. But if any one of you should suffer for being a Christian, then he is not to be ashamed of it. He should thank God that he has been called one. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you have given him, let him give eternal life to all those who have, you have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth and finished my work that you give me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me with that glory I had with you before ever the world was. I have made your name known to the men you took from the world to give me. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now at last they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you, for I have given them the teachings you gave to me, and they have truly accepted this, that I came from you, and have believed that it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and in them I am glorified. I am not in the world any longer, 
but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. I hope you are all well in your homes and hopefully with your loved ones, although I know some of you are on your own, but I hope you're well and in good spirits and you're managing to keep the faith alive in your own hearts and in your own homes and among your own um, family and friends. I hope you're also keeping sane. I know that these days are getting even more and more of a distraction and a nuisance for us, but keep the faith, keep your sanity, and keep safe and healthy. My homily this morning is going to be very short because I think there's just something from each of the readings that is key for us today. And it's this, pray continually, rejoice in your suffering, and know that Jesus holds you before the Father. That's really all I want to say today because that's what comes out of the readings. The disciples are all together praying and praying and praying with Mary and the, the family of Jesus. They're there praying their hearts out all the time. Pray continuously. That's the message for us today. So let's not give in to the temptation of maybe doing nothing, of doing nothing of value. Um, that doesn't mean to say you, can, you can't watch the television to take your mind off things. Of course you can, but don't let that be your whole day's activity, for goodness sake, please. Rejoice in your suffering. To be a Christian doesn't mean to say that you're part of a club where we all just hug one another and feel cosy, cosy, cosy. That doesn't, that's not what Christianity is about. If we are attacked or if we are suffering in some way because we bear the name of Jesus Christ, rejoice in it because we should be proud to know the Spirit of God is on us. And we can be proud in these circumstances. So rejoice if you're suffering. And I think all of us are suffering at this time in one way or another. Some of us may just be suffering from loneliness. Some of us may be suffering because we're with somebody that it's just that it's not pleasant at the moment. We've all got things that we're suffering from. The worry as well of our family and friends in other parts of the country or the world. We're worried, we're suffering. The Lord Jesus, is, St. Peter is telling us, rejoice in your suffering, rejoice. Because Jesus Christ suffered and he is glorified, one has been glorified and we will be glorified. And know that Jesus is holding us before the Father St. John in the Gospel today gives us an insight into what Jesus is praying about. And he says, Jesus says, I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for them because they belong to you and you've given them to me. So that's the Lord Jesus praying for us. Because the Lord Jesus knows that we are, we are the fathers. We are, we are of God. And that's why the Lord is praying for us. So please just take those, those um, sentences into your prayer life today. Pray continually. Rejoice in your suffering. And know that Jesus is holding you before the Father. At this point, I just want to give a plug for... The fact that we're celebrating the Solemnity of Pentecost next Sunday and we have already begun the Novena. The Novena, you can find it on Facebook and if you're watching this Mass now, it means you know what the Facebook page is. So go and find it on our Facebook page. But you can also find it on our parish website, stmarys-clapham.org.uk. You can find it on our Redemptorist website, redemptorist.co.uk. You can find it, the Novena, and you can find all our Masses, all our thoughts for the day, and any messages that we wanted to give to the parish. You can find these messages on YouTube. So if you're a Facebook user, and you know that people in the family, or friends, or parishioners, don't have Facebook, please encourage them to look on YouTube and it's St Mary's Clapham Redemptorists 
Put that in and you'll find this easily, and you'll find over a hundred videos. And then, those of you who are Twitter people, it's St Mary's underscore Clapham, and you'll find us there on Twitter. So I'm just giving a plug for the Novena, because I want us all to really be storming heaven this week and praying to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, pour afresh on me the gifts that you give us. But pour, Holy Spirit, pour especially upon me and upon you. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to pour especially on us the gifts that we don't know that we need. I think that's important. We all need gifts. And maybe we don't know which gift that we do need. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to bless us and pour out that gift um, next Sunday on all of us. our faith now by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I don't know what position you're in now at your home, whether you're standing or whether you're sitting or whether you're lying down, but I would encourage you now for these um, intercessions that we have just to sit down and to, to realise that it's different prayers this week. It's, it's a prayer from our own Archbishop, Archbishop John, who's given us these prayers this week to pray to the Holy Spirit for all the people that need it. So it's a slightly different form of prayer. And I would invite you just to sit down and to enter into the rhythm of this prayer. Come Holy Spirit, we pray, overcome the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Come Holy Spirit, we pray, restore the life of our communities, local, national and global. Come Holy Spirit, we pray, continue to inspire our generous and selfless service towards others, especially the weakest and poorest. Come Holy Spirit, we pray, set our clergy, religious and laity, our parishes and schools, our entire archdiocese ablaze with the Gospel. Come Holy Spirit, we pray, bring us wisdom as we discern our mission together, moving forward in hope. Come Holy Spirit, we pray, call forth vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate and the consecrated life. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, raise up husbands and wives as Christian parents who nurture holy families. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, so that peace and justice might transform our lives, our society, our world and our environment, with respect for every human life and the beauty of creation. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, breathe God's life within us to animate and strengthen us. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, with grace and healing for those in pain, in sickness, in trouble, and in need. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, help us persevere when life weighs heavy upon us. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, make hearts grow fonder in love of Christ when so many are separated from the sacraments. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray, change us to become more like Christ to live and love like him, to live and to love for him. Come, Holy Spirit. 
we take a few moments to pray for ourselves, to pray for this parish and all the wonderful people who are normally here with us, to pray with all of you on social media following us, to pray for the church throughout the world, to pray for the inhabitants of the world, especially those who have been affected by the coronavirus. We pray for the people we've lost in our own parish and we've, we've um, been to their funerals, only a few of us. We pray for those who mourn and I think it's very difficult at this sad time when people aren't able to be as close with the people who mourn. So I think we should pray especially for them today. But let's pray for all our own intentions, all our own loved ones and all people who are sick at this time. Mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbat, Plenis Uncele et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. 
Make holy birth for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus, Christus imperat. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Alphonsus de Gore, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, our God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever. church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And you takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I know that you're not able to receive communion today, but I would encourage you to make a, an act of spiritual communion. The act of spiritual communion is opening yourself completely to invite the Lord into the depth of your being, that you would know the love of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, and the, the message the Lord wants you to hear today. We'll use the prayer of St. Alphonsus Liguori. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Father, I pray that they may be one as we also are one. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries 
where will be accomplished in the body of the whole head who has already come to pass in Christ her head. I'm going to say that prayer again because I think I've got that wrong. Hear us, O God, our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole head what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. I hope and pray that you all have a wonderful day, a day of peace and joy. Tomorrow is a bank holiday, so we will be saying Mass at 12 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. It's at 12 o'clock Monday, the bank holiday, but the rest of the week it is Tuesday to Friday, it is 6 o'clock in the evening, and then Saturday and Sunday, 12 o'clock here. You'll be getting used to all these times that we're saying Mass under Covid. You'll forget Mass times when we come back to normal, and I don't know when that is yet, I'm afraid. I know our bishops are working very hard behind the scenes trying to get things progressed, but it's taking time, and we will not be able to just come back as we left the church. We will be coming back under social distancing, and maybe just for prayer to begin with. We might not join um, one another or mass in this place for, for a while yet, but we'll keep our fingers crossed, because that means making the sign of the cross in your pocket if you were doing that in the old days, and you didn't want people to know what you were doing, you were making the sign of the cross in your pocket. So that's what that's about, crossing your fingers. Anyway, I won't get into things like that just now. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you for on this day. His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend where he is. Amen. May he grant that as Christ, after his resurrection, was seen plainly by his disciples, so when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you, who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfilment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and those whom you love and remain with you all forever. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Regina, Regina, Regina.